A very good morning to you folks. Welcome to Wacky Wednesday. More fun and games, no doubt. Uh, no still this morning. He's off uh, running some errands. Uh, so just me and the KY star. Morning, mate. Hey, hi. Hi, 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 Ryan. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Um, not a great deal happening this morning so far, um, but still remains lively in a few pairs, which we will get to in due course. Um, let's kick it off with our old mate Uida in his third uh, parliamentary um, appearance of the week. Um, this time he says that monetary easing is not aimed at funding government spending. Uh, consideration towards the government's debt financing cost won't constrain necessary monetary policy moves. Um, Japan's cost push, in, cost push inflation is peaking out uh, and a policy response is difficult during cost push inflation. Um, now, I know Kay and us have mentioned that he's uh, in overdrive with the comments at the moment. Um, these are comments in Parliament, so he is off. He's obviously been summoned there for various reasons, um, and then he's responding to questions or making statements there. Um, but what is of note is that they are covering all the different subjects at the moment. Um, we heard how easing is going to continue um, and that the conditions aren't there yet. We've heard that uh, from the finance ministry uh, that consideration will need to be made if the Bank of Japan tighten uh, regarding um the issuance and the like now we're hearing from ueda um making a distinction that keeping monetary policy separate from government funding and spending um and that the problems a government may face will not necessarily impact what they decide with monetary policy um so again this is this is an exercise in I would say detailing the different conditions and setting the stall out in terms of what the BOJ will do regarding monetary policy. If they move to tightening, they won't be worrying too much uh, about what that effect has on the government. Um, that's for the government to solve. They won't ignore it, obviously. Um, but all these little comments that have come out are pretty much covering a lot of bases in terms of a possible tightening cycle. Um, so that's that's important going in because it is pushing us towards the BOJ exiting whenever that may be, be it they hint at something in this meeting or we don't get anything till later in the year. Um, the mood, the sentiment is switching towards when they exit, um, whereas you take it six months, a year ago, no one was really even thinking about uh, a possible exit on that side. So we're... The oil tanker is slowly, very slowly shifting, um, you know, minutely, I would say. Um, what do you make of uh, those comments overnight, Kay, yourself? Well, I think it's a pretty good sum up of what's uh, going on. We've been saying over communication. Um, for the time being, uh, it, it looks as they uh, will, for this meeting at least, keep, uh, keep everything in place. But... Uh, again, they, they, as you rightly say, they are preparing uh, more than the markets. They seem to be preparing the government, saying like, uh, all right, guys, if you want to uh, fund yourself cheaply, uh, you might uh, be, be wanting to start to think about how you are going to do it. And uh, so that, again, um, I don't know whether it's really the reason why the yen is, is stronger today, but it does... Um, it, it does fit in the, the framework that I've been talking about as well, is that um, they want to, to prepare everybody to, to make the transition as smooth as possible, but it, it remains the base case that they are going to try to normalize. So, um, and, and by over-communicating, they, they want to prepare everybody, uh, and especially the government, I'd say now, to... Um, to, to, to try and do something uh, about uh, about their finances. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting actually this uh, this uh, uh, communication exercise. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, you know, looking at it from a big picture, you know, you've obviously been watching and trading the BOJ for years. I have as well. Um, I don't think we've ever been as close in reality to them changing. 
uh, from easing than we have at the moment. Um, Absolutely. And, and even that, we're still miles away from it. Well, um, you know, I, I would expect by the end of this year, they, they would have switched to the path in, in one way or another. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, and I think um, this this meeting, um, we, we shouldn't be surprised if they talk about stuff, right? Uh, keeping everything in place, but we shouldn't be surprised if they actually um, talk about things. And uh, I'd say from June onwards, I think the next meeting is in June, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, from yeah. June onwards, we should really be prepared to see them change something. And, uh, and, and that, uh, well, I, I think the speculation will be, will be rife uh, by then uh, for, for, for changes or at least embryotical changes. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it's going to be, uh, but I, it still remains my base case that it's going to be much slower than in any other uh, of the major countries um, and the way that central banks are handling it, handle it. It's going to be much slower because they just can't let everything go because that's going to create mayhem in uh, in the markets and not only the Japanese market. Um, but uh, it, it's um, we we really should prepare ourselves for uh, for some normalization in Japan. Yeah, very much so. Um, and just today, and obviously things can change depending on how markets move. Um, but if we look at something like dollar yen um, and what's going on, let's just see if I can do this without messing it up. Um, if we look at what's happening in dollar yen. Oh, see, I messed it up. Back there, back there. There we go. Let's get in that one. We're doing a lot of yield following at the moment. Um, and so what's happening in dollar yen right now isn't really reflective of any sort of fundamental uh, things going on. So we're, we're pretty much on the, the yield bandwagon and we're moving because of that. Um, I think we would be a lot lower right now in dollar yen um, if it wasn't for the BOJ coming up, um, such as the risks both ways. But if we look at the broader picture, um, if we are heading towards the Bank of Japan coming out of easing policy, any dovish remarks are going to be short-lived um, because the market is going to say, OK, fine, you're, you're being dovish this week. You're sticking to policy, no changes in language or whatever. But that's not going to last. The expectation ball is going to get rolling. Um, and if we're going to see yields in the, in the US and elsewhere doing what they're doing, i.e. coming down, that's going to keep selling pressure on yen pairs. So... What I'm saying is there's more reason stacking up um, why yen pairs go down than going up. So if we do get the market rallying dollar yen on uh, the Bank of Japan on Friday, I don't think given the price action and all the other assets and everything else going on, I don't think that lasts. Uh, and I think that rally will get sold um, until something else changes. Now, that being said, we get uh, good uh, GDP out of the US and, and a couple of good data prints, and we know the short-term sentiment can swing right around, and suddenly the dollar's bid and yields are up again. Um, but even then, in the bigger picture, we can't maintain gains in yields at the moment. We can't maintain gains uh, in the dollar at the moment. So the sentiment is definitely dollar bearish on that side of things. Um, and as mentioned, if the BOJ are heading towards uh, some form of exit, then that's going to be bearish for yen pairs as well. So all the bricks are stacking up why, in my opinion, um, I'm, and my trading, why I'm short dollar yen and happy to stay that side of the trade for now. Um, but we shall see what happens, as we like to say. Um, coming back to, let's put that back on. Single. Just uh, just uh, about this yen, I, I think we're already seeing a part of it in in the end crosses, right? Um, the dollar yen is is some kind of a vehicle because, as you say, yields have been coming off. Um, yesterday, equity markets were lower as well, and that that is weighing on uh, on yen pairs. But um, I, I I think as well that uh, the market is going to. It's a bit like the inverse of what's happening uh, for the Fed. Um, the market is going to try and fight the Fed uh, or, or has tried to fight the Fed for months. And uh, now I guess we are going to be 
in, uh, in, in the scenario where uh, the market is going to anticipate the Bank of Japan for the months to come. So, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, and I don't know really about the dollar side of it. Um, the jury is out on that one, I reckon. But uh, at least if you look at the, all the yen pairs, they are uh, trading pretty weak, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, all for their different reasons. Uh, today, particularly, um, Aussie yen is one in particular. Um, the reason that's looking more soft than elsewhere is because of the CPI numbers out of Australia yesterday, um, which I shall pull up for you here. Um, so pretty significant uh, dips in CPI. Um, headline CPI coming in at 7%, slightly, well, a pip higher than the 6.9, but still down a big chunk from last month. Um, the core measures as well, all coming in um, lower, uh, well, some of them coming in lower. Um, and that's t that's given Aussie a bit of a, or rate expectations, a, a bit of a kick, um, keeping the RBA probably more on the uh, low to poor side of the fence at the moment. Um, certainly there's no additional inflation and pressures there, why they may turn a bit more hawkish uh, like the RBNZ did. Um, so that keeps them, uh, as I say, on that side of the street there. Um, the Riks Bank, they hiked by 50 pips as expected uh, to 3.5% and indicated the rate will be raised by 25 pips in June or September. Um, is that a less hawkish move there from uh, the Riks Bank in terms of their forward guidance, Kay? The, no, the, the 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 less hawkish uh, sign in there is two things. We be, there's two dissenters, uh, Floden and uh, Bremen, uh, who said that they would only uh, that they only voted for uh, 25 BPs. And then there's something really strange because they they hiked to three and a half percent, saying that June or September they should do another 25. Um, okay, perhaps that could be non hawkish because they announce uh, perhaps the end when they will do that but then they on, on their um projections they still foresee the uh the interest rate to be at 3.2 percent in in 2023 i don't know how you explain that uh, but anyway the market was uh hoping for a very hawkish report and uh, didn't probably see what uh, what it wanted and uh and the stock he lost uh one percent in uh in in literally ten minutes or so, uh, ten minutes later, it was one percent weaker. The uh, the Swedish krona. So, where the the Riks Bank said that they would prefer a stronger currency, they will have to uh, do something else to prop up the Swedish krona. Yeah, definitely. Um, moving on to the ECB and uh, EconoStream was out with one of their sources pieces saying that. Uh, ECB insiders are generally seen tilting towards a 25 pip hike, but are very willing to discuss uh, a 50 pip hike. Um, now, what I've seen of these guys is they their sources seem to be on the uh, dovish side of the fence um, that they speak to. Um, so usually the sources pieces are coming out with a, a little bit of a less hawkish slant to them. Um, but Puts it in the mix that uh, maybe we're not getting a 50 um, rate expectations at the moment lean towards a 25 at around 82% with a 50 um, priced at the balance of 18%. Um, I think it's a bit closer than what those estimates or those probabilities are saying uh, regarding the 50. We know they're going on about sticky inflation. Um, we shall find out uh, next week one way or another. Um, ECB's Wojciech said that the ECB has no choice but to raise rates further. Um, over to the Bank of England and BOE's Broadbent said signs, there were signs that wage pressures are starting to ease, uh, but they're not easing enough just yet. And uh, BOE's Peel caused a, a bit of a consternation here in the UK uh, with big headlines saying people in the UK need to accept they are poorer. Um, not exactly uh, communications masterclass there from Peel. Um, but the point he was making is is pretty sound. He's saying that inflation is making the UK as a whole worse off. Um, there's a risk that monetary policy does too much. Um, recent events have moderated the calls for higher rates um, and UK inflation may dip below 2% in two years. Um, so that's caused a bit of a, a stink here in the UK in the presses um, by 
you know no one likes to hear that they're being made poorer um even if the sentiment behind it is correct that obviously inflation erodes earnings income it does in effect make everyone poorer but um it doesn't need to be put in those terms um i don't think so it's a bit of a communications hash there perhaps maybe a little bit of uh, spin on on what he actually said via the news wires uh, which we can never rule out um coming over to the us and we got uh, some more data the philly fed data came out uh where am i lost where i am here we are on tuesday um well i'm trying to point it out but it's not on the calendars anyway um so philly fed services uh, index or non-manufacturing as it called came out and it came in as a much worse minus 22.8 versus minus 12.8 previously um, some of the uh, components underneath um, a bit mixed um, new orders were down a chunk minus 23.9 versus minus 15.4 prior however employment rose to 11.5 from 3.2 prior wages uh, and the costs associated came up stronger 39.7 versus 25.1 prior uh, prices paid were off a little bit 35.7 versus 37.9 prior so overall a bit of a drop in activity in the services sector for the philly fed it is only a small regional uh, number but uh, one the market likes to keep an eye on um, and it also highlights potential stickiness in wages aka inflationary pressures um, so we don't get the ISMs until next week, I believe, um, the big ones next week, along with the next NFP. So next week's going to be a big old data run. Um, house prices in the US as well. Um, still looking OK, but what I am noticing is that the year on year numbers are drifting lower. Um, the FHFA uh, house price index came in at 4% year on year down from 5.3 percent though it was up on the month 0.5 percent um same with the case shiller numbers there um year on year for the 20 city number only a gain of 0.4 percent over um last year's 2.6 percent so a bit of softness there and the national hpi as well came in much softer at um 2.05 percent versus 3.79 percent prior so as I say, house price is still on the up, but the gains are decreasing. Um, if we start to see some negative numbers creeping in, that will flag some potential problems in the housing market. A bit like what we were talking about yesterday with PPI numbers. If we start seeing negative numbers there, that affects on um, inflation. So these little clues is what I look for in the fundamentals, just to see if there's certain sectors that may be starting to flag some problems that will then feed through into what we know for the Fed and expectations and all that sort of thing. Um, consumer confidence came in at 101.3, missing expectations of 104 and down on the prior month. Um, the one year inflation expectations, not too much of a change. It came down to 6.2 versus 6.3% prior. Um, what that again tells us is that there's some stickiness in inflationary expectations from the consumer and the last bit of data was uh, the new home sales uh, which came in a, a solid 683 beating expectations and higher than last month um, and also the prices component in that um, also a small up on the year prior so nothing flagging any problems there as well um, you can see also some uh, other smaller regional data there from the richmond uh, fed um, both manufacturing and services coming in worse than expected um, so maybe some wobbles we're going to be seeing in there um, but as we know this month um, the numbers have been up and down between the regions we saw empire up in manufacturing philly fed down in manufacturing we saw the s p global up in both manufacturing and services um, now we're seeing some other numbers up and down down and down so a bit of a mixed picture going into, as I say, those main ISM numbers uh, next week. Um, on the rate front, uh, yesterday, Fed swaps were no longer pri fully pricing in a rate hike by mid-year. Um, so coming down in the pricing there for 
what the Fed are going to be doing. Again, that's what I think is feeding into the yield story, the lower yields, the market getting less hawkish on the Fed. Uh, rate probabilities for the Fed are 84% for 25 pip hike next week. Uh, and unchanged is the other side of the trade at 16%. Um, First Republic Bank is uh, looking closer to its, uh, uh, let's call it a fire sale. Um, they're looking at uh, shedding up to 100 billion in asset sales. Um, they're also potentially looking at laying off 25% of their workforce. Um, so there's still uh, a few bank worries uh, floating around at the regional levels down there. Um, and on the bank stuff, the Fed are going to release their SVP um, review next uh, on the 28th uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So we get to hear what they fucked up um, in terms of uh, that uh, shit show. Um, Google, they had their earnings out, uh, which were pretty decent, but they are saying that they are going to meaningfully slow the pace of hiring in 2023. Um, obviously, one of the big hirers in the tech space. Um, so that may not be good for the jobs market moving forward uh, microsoft uh, was also out with earnings and pretty good looking as well uh, beating of expectations uh, across there and uh, the old fogey bidden is announced it has announced that he's going to be standing for re-election next year okay any uh, comments on any of that stuff uh, yeah i hope he recalls that he's going to run for president yeah this is not uh, it's not wasn't unknown, uh, but just a confirmation. It's looking like uh, no, Trump. I, said, I, hope, I hope he will remember. He. Uh, oh, he's hope he will remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, not, now the, the the one only other thing that I saw was a little bit of um, news or um, projects in uh, in uh, New Zealand, um, where the uh, the. They are trying to bring down um, some uh, loan to value uh, uh, demands, um, and and which may uh, stem the uh, the the housing slump a little bit over there. And um, there was another one as well that I saw, but I just forgot now uh, where uh, where exactly it it was. Um, and yeah, and then but that's just like. Uh, uh, a Goldman uh, warning that uh, the quants are out of ammo for buying stocks. So uh, I don't know. They must already be short themselves. Uh, S and P, which is a, which is which, which is a bit of a bummer because <laughs> because I'm short. <laughs> I sold it yesterday. Uh, but but anyway, yeah, it's 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 coming off uh, a, a little bit as well. I'll, I'll have a look at the uh, the S and P in a in a minute. Um, no, for the rest, I haven't seen really anything uh, anything in particular. Um, you've said uh, you've said most of it, uh, really. Um, um, I don't see anything else on on the on the Aussie front. Um, the only thing I would I would say that what we are seeing this morning is clearly, if you look at the currencies that are moving, you've got the yen on the one side. You already, you already mentioned. Uh, which is probably a mix between uh, yields lower, uh, stocks lower, and uh, so risk lower and uh, and perhaps a bit of uh, a little bit of that uh, Bank of Japan uh, speculation going on, whether it's now or later. Uh, the expectation of normalization, but I reckon that's going to increase once we 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 are past the whole run of central banks that we uh, that we will have um, in in the upcoming week or two weeks actually. <laughs> Excuse me, and then um, yeah the. The, the, the rest is we, we are trading value date end of month. And uh, what we're seeing this morning is very likely uh, once the, the yen did, did this move, the, the rest is really euro and, and sterling versus the rest of the world this morning. And I guess that's uh, that is the European asset managers rebalancing, uh, rebalancing books, further rebalancing. Euro has been very beat over the past month. Um, sterling actually been a bit of a laggard at times, but then uh, it, it has the tendency to to hit back uh, relatively quickly. We've seen uh, the euro sterling yesterday uh, trying to break out and then coming back, and then cable finds it really tough to stay under 124 right now. So I guess um, either it's also month-end related, but 
as of what I've been saying over the past weeks, really, I find Sterling having quite a bit of, uh, I'd call it elasticity, um, being able to, to, to bounce back relatively quickly. And I find it a, rel- a pretty interesting uh, development. So I'm, uh, I'm keeping a close eye on what's happening in, in the Sterling, uh, perhaps Tonight, uh, if uh, if value uh, value date month end uh, gives us uh, what we usually may expect, uh, perhaps uh, there's a bit of a bit of an opportunity to buy cheap sterling. Perhaps um, I don't know. I'm uh, watching the clock. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's important. Have we seen any any moves around the hourlies? Um, yeah, it's been now into one at the moment. It's actually been an ongoing story. As soon as the the clock. Uh, Struck eight in uh, in in Europe or the or the UK. Both uh, both euro and uh, and sterling have started to move up. And, and yet, we get another one now. Come again. We get another one now. It seems five minutes to uh, the top yeah, of the hour. Now, yeah, but now it's 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 uh, slowing down a little bit. Um, I reckon the 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 next one will be around uh, noon. One yeah. p.m. and then uh, and then we'll wait. Fix. See where we end up in the euro dollar or in the cable. Uh, but if you look at the rest, um, yeah, really, it's just, there's so many processes being done that it, it's it's weighing on the Kiwi, it's weighing on the Aussie, weighing on the Canada, and on the on the CNH in uh, to a certain extent, and uh, all to the benefit of uh, euro, sterling, and yen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, we're looking at uh, euro dollar, and it's it's really trading between the levels at the moment um keeping an eye on this you know this high that we we clocked um yesterday um which didn't quite get as high as the previous high um last week uh, we've had another look up there again today um we'll see what happens there again this time of of the month and with everything going on the big uh, risk events coming up and data and whatnot um it's hard to see anything breaking out um but what you want to look for particularly over these month end stuff is if prices do kick into places or areas that look like they have moved outside of the fundamentals um, and the general price trends going on, um, be they ranges or otherwise. Um, So that can sometimes give you a little opportunity. Um, You know, if you suddenly over a fix, so Euro dollar spiking above 111, you might think, okay, hello, is there any real reason why that's gone there? And then maybe you look at a fade or something like that. But uh, you have to obviously judge the moves as they come. Um, but as mentioned with dollar yen, it remains heavy at the moment. Um, we got below that 13, 70, 80 area um, or 1, 1, 133, 70, 80. Um, it's now resisting around there. Um, so that's keeping the, the price on the downside. Um, I'm hoping for a bit more down here it's just to, give me a bit of margin over my average short price which is around uh 133.65 um so i'm uh, happy that we continue to move lower um as i say the the greater it goes in my favor before the boe the more margin i have to play with if uh, it rallies back up um but even even so i wouldn't be surprised even if we trade at 133 and it's a it's a stand pat boj that we don't run up to 135 again so i'm not ruling anything out uh, with the bank of japan and i'm not placing too much faith in some of these moves that we're seeing now um, as mentioned if you look at it compared to the yield picture um, if it wasn't for the boj i think this would be probably down around 133 maybe under um, just on the yield picture alone um, so that may exert its influence after the bank of japan um, but Plenty of time until we get there. Um, Euro sterling, as Kay mentioned, I did try a break trade um, on this one. Uh, I think it was the flow show I mentioned yesterday about that. Um, might have been a trade off, can't remember. Um, but yeah, it looks like a typical um, fake out. My stop entry was uh, pretty much bang on the high. Um, so I got done for 20 pips on that one. I didn't give it a lot of room because I was worried for exactly that reason, that uh, it wasn't a real move or a lasting move, and uh, it would turn tail and kick me in the ass. So I kept the trade very tight there. Um, At the moment, it may be that we're setting up that we're back in the box, um, an 88.60, 
60 70 is going to be resistance again um it already looks that way with a current high at the moment um or it could just be that we're going to wash this level out and we're just going to flap above and below above and below and uh, not make much of it um by and large it is following this old trend line that uh, i've got running um, in here um, which comes off from earlier in the year from as you can see there just the start of february um not something i'm really trading but i'm just keeping an eye on it for more for a, a bit of note because it is seemingly following that line down um albeit not exactly um so let's see if we get a move under and if it holds under that will maybe flag it as a bit more of a level or a bit more of a tech play um, than it is at the moment um but otherwise it's the same old levels down towards 88 25 30s then down towards 88 87 90 um so this one probably decent on the range play um if we do get another quick move above this 60 area can it get above the next level um or is it going to just peter out once again Aussie dollar, I know Kay will talk about this one in a bit more detail because uh, he's been trading it uh, on the short side for the, on that one. Um, but again, the data is making most of the moves here. That CPI number there, dripping out the Fed at, at the RBA expectations. Um, so it could be that we're heading towards these lows back at the uh, 65s, um, which may... Be something to look at for longs because that area down there is a really solid point um, previously and uh, I may be looking at that area for longs as well because I say down to that 65 is looking pretty solid um, now I had a I was trading this run up when we got there last time so this area is going to be could be quite important and and I think it's going to take a bit more than what we've already had to, to really crunch that. Um, so unless we get a change from the Fed um, or the RBA turning even less hawkish, um, this might be an area to, to look at. What are your thoughts on this one, Kay? As I said, you know you've been uh, on the short side of this one. Mm. No, no, I, th I think, um, well, if, if my hunch is correct for uh, for this afternoon, I'm ready to take profit in on, on the shorts if we see it a bit lower. I like that area as well, 65 and a half. So it, um, um, anywhere actually between that 65 and a half and, and what you're showing there, it's it's um, it's an interesting zone, right? Um, yeah, yeah we, we, we're seeing a bit lower CPI in, uh, in Australia, but um, same as with every uh, as with every uh, FX pair, um, the other side is uh, perhaps not ready to uh, to to ramp much higher the the, the dollar. Um, I'm uh, I'm a bit in doubt. The dollar will have uh, too much legs post uh, the Fed, and unless they really tell the people, uh, okay, I mean, uh, we are pausing, but uh, we don't don't bet on us for uh, for putting rates lower for uh, for the foreseeable future. A lot can happen next week, but. Also looking at the clock and uh, and as I say I, I that's the way I trade uh, month end anyway I I think there could be an acceleration this afternoon and um, for me personally it's going to be uh, an opportunity to to take the rest of uh, of, of my shorts uh, same in the Kiwi uh, there's a bit going on around 61 the figure but I'll I'll show that um, I'll show that myself. Yeah no worries um, just the other one I wanted to look at um, which was the dollar one. Um, which I was triggered into long yesterday and buy stops, um, managed to knock some off on the way up. Uh, my highest exit was in the 94s. I was I left a TP in overnight, a partial TP in overnight, um, up at 66.50, um, but we didn't get close there. We pretty much banged our head on the 65 handle. Um, the dip so far is encouraging because it hasn't got back to testing um the break point um so that's encouraging we, as we're not faking out just yet um i will be watching carefully if we do get a move down to that uh breakout point 91 92 um but for now it's looking like it uh it's 50 50 whether it carries on back up but at least we know where the next resistance level is if we get a break above there into this old fib zone 
um, I will slice more off and uh, then bring my stops right up behind uh, just to try and lock in the rest of it. Um, are you, I, I didn't say, are you still blogging this one as well, mate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I, I'm, uh, I'm less, uh, how shall I say, uh, optimistic or, or I'm, I'm a little more conservative. I've put my next one on at 560. Um, yeah. on, on that one um, yeah and again um, perhaps this afternoon I, I, I don't know where how it's going, going to pan out but um, if I see some some move higher and, and it stops uh, short of that of that zone I'm going to take more off I'm um, I'm not too sure about the 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 uh, it, it's a, it's a good technical break uh, because uh, it's, it's it's keeping uh, and relatively easy. I think it's a it's a decent uh, it's a decent break, and we've been we've been in that range for so long, um, for more than a month, and um, so the the break is decent, and uh, so we should uh, we should uh, ride it for as long as it lasts, and and taking some off uh, makes uh, makes the uh, if if we would get stopped on uh, on on a move back down below six ninety ninety one it's going to make uh, a relatively free trade so uh, that's all the better yeah exactly I would have liked it to move a, a bit bigger I would have thought the break might have been a bit bigger um, oh, so that's just the way this pair can move but you know then if it doesn't do that you have to uh, adjust your your management and take that into consideration and like hey if I if we see another move up to this ninety five and it and it holds again, um, then I'm going to take a decent chunk off myself because it that would suggest that uh, we're not quite ready to to carry I, on up next year. Yeah, I I think it's still okay, especially when you look at uh, how um, uh, the majors behave. Um, they are not the, the the dollar is not stronger there. It's it's only stronger versus commodity currencies and uh, and China really. Um, it's okay. We did, we did the break. We did uh, half a percent. I, I think is that's okay for a uh, for a break. Now we need uh, ideally to confirm, right? So uh, ideally, yeah. actually, if if we could take some off this afternoon, would be great. Then see a retest of that six ninety one and hold, and and then we can perhaps uh, start to move uh, move higher again. Uh, but that's of course uh, to be decided. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think if we get like you say, if we get a move up. Takes them off the table. If we get a retest to that 91 and it holds, we can reload and uh, see if we can get another go, have another shot at it. Um, right, do you want to uh, do your thing? Yeah, yeah. Let's do a thing. Do your thing. SP. So, um, yesterday, uh, people in the room know um, it was. It was Banging too much on that uh, on on that forty one uh, ten fifteen for my liking, so um, gave it a little go. It was actually pretty timely, pretty timely entry that one. It uh, it, it hung around there for half an hour, and then uh, we we saw the break. Once the um, the New York market got uh, got running well and truly, uh, so we saw the break. We again saw a quick test of that low forty seventies, which again. Is, uh, is holding. Um, so we'll have a look at it this afternoon to see if we get a retest of that um, 41, 10, 15 zone. Um, I've, I've taken some off. In the meantime, uh, my uh, my stop is already at the original entry because if it goes back above 41, 10, 15, 20, uh, it's no no real reason to, to keep it short, I think. But um, yeah, this afternoon could be an interesting one. We could see a move or, or at least a retest down there. Um, why not go uh, go back to 4050 uh, and if worse comes to worse um we do have a bit of numbers this afternoon but um, i'm not sure if the durables are really of that uh, size to 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 be able to trigger more um uh, negativity into this market but at least if it would ever uh, continue to go south and uh, i think the big level should be around uh 4K, right? Um, that is your level on the downside. And for the short term, as I said, keep an eye on that 41.10, 41.17 or so. If it goes back above, not too much reasons to uh, to be short in this one. Um, what is worth noting 
is that uh, we've been telling so much about, uh, or so often about correlations. And when yields go lower, uh, it, it's good for equity markets. But I think the market is a bit uh, worried about the state of um, of uh, the economy, the state of the companies. We're seeing regularly those second line data coming out and, and being a bit weakish. So that is typically a, a, a market where um, risk can come off together with lower rates. And uh, those, those, this is what is uh, what's going on now. Um, moving over to Euro dollar quickly. Um, yesterday, we stopped bang on this uh, 38.2 again of the of the last uh, of the last leg higher, uh, and and saw a, a severe bounce that uh, testifies that the euro is still very much uh, very much in control of its fate and. We're seeing that on all the all the euro crosses um, again. Where am I? If you look at the euro Canada, it's absolutely non-stop. Uh, it's going and going and going, and we are closing in on a line here from 2015. One, two, three, four touches. Uh, that's big enough to uh, respect it, I reckon. So that's uh, in uh, around 153 quarters where we are very close to. And then you have those tops here uh, in the one no 151s. Um, they are uh, perhaps also going to have a say in what's happening in the Euro Canada, together with what's uh, happening in the, in, the, in the oils and, uh, and the commodities for the time being. Oil is not moving too much, but it's not bouncing an awful lot either. So uh, we're still around 77.30 in, uh, in the WTI. Um, but that still testifies, I think, well, it's it's probably both. It's uh, it's um, less hawkish Bank of Canada. It's uh, it's a very strong euro. It's oil's coming off, um, despite actually not too bad uh, Canadian data, if you, uh, if you look at them. So uh, for the time being, Keep an eye on this, not fighting it uh, right now, but I'm starting to have a sneaky feeling that the Euro crosses on, 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 on their own may, may, and I'm just, it's conditionally, may put a top in very close to, to the ECB, maybe blow, blow out in some of those pairs and then uh, <clears throat> start to uh, start to come back post uh, ECB, depending on what, uh, Mrs. Lagarde is, uh, is going to tell us. Um, Euro Aussie, same thing. Um, Aussie also under the cush uh, versus yen versus uh, even versus the dollar, it's trading at 66 the figure. Um, we are very close to these uh, uh, 2020, October 2020 highs at 168.20. That's uh, another, let's say 0 0.6, 0 0.7% to go. Uh, that could be enough. And if not this one, the 50% all door, uh, this is not an objective. Uh, this is a subjective high, right? Uh, because nobody really knows the exact high of the pandemic or the exact extremes of some of those um, processes in the pandemic. Never, uh, nevertheless, re no, note this level uh, if ever it uh, it would really blow out in the next uh, in the next few days. Um, 170 and a half. Um, another cross that's relentless still is the Euro Noki. But we are getting very close to those levels that uh, Stella and I were already talking about. Uh, this We are in the zone, 1170, 1176. Um, this is really where uh, where the thing should in theory stop if it has, a, if it has the, the, the ability for the Norwegian kroner to to strengthen a bit, but uh, watch out, we could have this 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 quick blowout as well. I'm really it's the tiniest of positions. It's it's not really having a lot of impact on my PNL, but I'm uh, I'm I've started to be very 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 shyly short, and but it, but it just continued to go. So I'm uh, for the, I'll, I'll be watching the clock this afternoon because if Euronoki shows signs of topping out. This may be, sorry. This may be one to keep a, a very close eye on. This uh, uh, this uh, dollar noki. If uh, we are seeing the typical value date month and moves in the dollar, um, 
I'd love this to go and read this uh, 1170. It's it's not that far. And it, it looks a bit far on the on the on the chart, but it's 0 0.6 percent. It's it's actually um, have the same move in the euro dollar that we have seen yesterday afternoon um, in to, uh, at the start of the of the US session. We're back there. Uh, it's, it's as simple. If you look at those. Uh, uh, at that candle, for instance, it did uh, it did uh, close to a percent in uh, in 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 a little uh, time. So um, ideally, we'd go up there for me, and then I may try to um, to uh, intervene a little bit. Um, yeah, this looks to be an, a pretty funky zone here on the on the dollar noki. Right, what else? Um, as I was saying, cable. I, it may be all all month end, but then I'm looking at this is cable. Yeah, we had those those setbacks, and uh, and and I am like everybody else. I'm not trusting Bailey at the Bank of England at all. I think it's one of the worst central bankers we've ever seen, and 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 it also weighed on on the sterling in a way. But this sterling continues to to surprise perhaps people a little bit. So uh, I'm going to be. Um, a keen watcher here, if ever um, we could have a setback this afternoon, um, back below, ideally back below this magnet zone of 124, 40, 50, closer again to 124, um, or just below, this could be an interesting zone to um, to closely monitor. Uh, Pop, 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 pop. What else? Yeah, anything uh, anyone wants to look at? I, I can show all those all those yen crosses, but we 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 know what they are doing, right? They it's broken down and uh, and really accelerated. We are on a, a a small interesting zone here on the on the Aussie yen. But then when I look at uh, what's happening on the yen right now, yen is just strengthening and strengthening again. Um, yeah, um, it's perhaps not uh, a, a right time to fight what's going on in uh, in the yen right now. Uh, but if you're short. Keep an eye on this level, and uh, it may be uh, it may be interesting to uh, to have a look at it. Um, the Kiwi yen is a is a bit of a different one uh, because we could argue it's still in its um, more medium term channel. Uh, we 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 had this this drop out and then the the, the uh, strong move back into it, and it's still wrestling with it. It's trying to break now, right? It's trying to break, so it could uh, going to break. Um, like the rest of the yen pairs, I'm I'm not inclined to 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 try and and bottom fish this one, but uh, again, if you're short in it, uh, it may be an area you want to to look at. Uh, Kellett, I think we we we've already spoken about it. Um, I, it's it's all end of month and the euro strength. The it's not euro exceptionalism. But if you look at uh, the ECB expectations versus the Fed expectations, we've been talking about that for really a long time already. Um, and that really explains a lot of what's happening in, uh, in the euro and in the euro dollar and in the euro crosses. Um, if you look at it on the uh, little bit longer, if you look at it uh, also already against, uh, against the dollar, um, look at what's happened in the euro dollar. Look at what happens in the in the differentials. Half of your answer, at least, is there. Okay. So uh, and again, uh, well, today it doesn't move a lot, but I think today we are really in the end of month territory, which is uh, keeping the um, the euro and and sterling under pin today. Um, Yeah, quick one on the dollar mix. Yesterday I was saying in the room, it looks a little complacent to dollar mix um, right now. And uh, if, if risk continues to, to feel the heat, um, this could be bouncing a little bit, in my opinion. It could be, it could be. Um, but if you look at it, it's starting to, to really hold. Of course, if it breaks through 1790, uh, lights out. Uh, and then we are... We will be in for the next uh, move lower, but that may be musing for after the Fed, in my opinion. Um, and there were also a, a few rumors flying around yesterday that uh, Banksico may, may be in for a pause um, during their uh, uh, over their next meeting. And and if we look at the inflation data, 
uh, there may be enough reasons for the Mexico to start to um, to start to pause. If you have interest rates of 11 or above percent and your um, inflation is running at seven three quarters, I think the latest, it's uh, perhaps time for the mix to um, to build in a pause. All right, that's about it. Um, as we see, the dollar rand still in that uh, in that range, but bouncing off 18. Ryan already spoke about the dollar China. Uh, I, I like this. I like it. I like this bounce actually. Um, not not only the FIB, not only the the this range, but a but a nice three four point uh, trend line. And it's it's a it's a decent break. But um, again, um, the dollar has some saying uh, in that as well, and perhaps for the. Uh, for the end of the week, the end of the month, uh, we could um, uh, we could see a bit of a um, a small, uh, different picture for the dollar, and that's it for me, Ryan. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, just a couple of comments. Michael was saying earlier that iron ore and commodity prices are dropping, and that's keeping the Aussie under pressure. Yep, very much so in the mix as well. Um, sometimes you get more than one wind blowing at any one time. Um, and that's probably what's happening there and commodity currencies uh, in general as well. Um, just back to uh, dollar yen quickly. Um, we are getting another move down. We've just moved down below these lows um, of the day so far. Um, so keep an eye on that. The bleed still continues. If we do keep heading down, we've got this zone pretty much from, from 139 down to 132.80. Um, so if we get down there, it may sort of be a similar looking story to what we got up around 134.30s. Uh, so keep just keep an eye on that area. If we do head down there, that might be a bit of a stretch point um, for this sort of moves, um, whatever goes on. Not too much data today. We've got the NBA mortgage stuff coming up uh, in just over half an hour. Durable goods uh, coming out as well. So keep an eye on that um, just for your data input if it's really bad then the dollar's probably going to suffer again as will yields um if it's good um we might see a little rally in the dollar um but given the mood and what's going on during the last couple of days or this week so far again that might be something that gets hit by uh, rally sellers uh, in the buck so keep an eye on that and on that note we shall call it a day um i'm going to be uh, disappearing off later to the footy um uptown so be good. Don't break anything. Um, please join us on Face a little later on where you get the views uh, from the master himself, coach, and uh, all the rest of the team, no doubt. Thank you, as always, Kay, for your valued input. Um, Cheers, mate. Everyone. All the best at the foot. Thank you, mate. And uh, everyone, have a great day all. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.